If you have your Bible, I know you do. If you would turn with me to Numbers, I want to read a passage of scripture, a story that you might be familiar with, but you probably wouldn't think to, to hear it on Thanksgiving. Numbers chapter 22. If you would stand with me when you find it. Numbers chapter 22. To all those who are guests here with us, our visitors, we are so glad to have you sharing with us today. And we appreciate your, your setting aside the time. In Numbers chapter 22. In Numbers chapter 22. I want to read a story. Sunday school folk kind of familiar with this little story but I want you to hang with me for a few moments um, and hopefully I'll get the point across in Numbers chapter 22 I want to start reading at verse 20 at verse 20 alright if you have it would you say amen amen, amen. Numbers 22 I'm going to read from verse 20 on to verse 35 And God came to Balaam at night and said to him, If the men have come to call you, rise, go with them. But only do what I tell you. So Balaam rose in the morning and saddled his donkey and went with the princes of Moab. But God's anger was kindled against, be kindled because he went. And the angel of the Lord took his stand in the way as his adversary. Now he was riding on the donkey, and his two servants were with him. And the donkey saw the angel of the Lord standing in the road with a drawn sword in his hand. And the donkey turned aside out of the road and went into the field. And Balaam struck the donkey to turn her into the road. Yeah. Then the angel of the Lord stood in a narrow path between the vineyards with a wall on either side. And when the donkey saw the angel of the Lord, she pushed against the wall and pressed Balaam's foot against the yeah. wall. So he struck her again. Wow. Then the angel of the Lord went ahead and stood in a narrow place where there was no way to turn either to the right or to the left. And when the donkey saw the angel of the Lord, she lay down under Balaam, and Balaam's anger was kindled, and he struck the donkey with his staff. Then the Lord opened the mouth of the donkey, and she said to Balaam, What have I done to you that you have struck me these three times? And Balaam said to the donkey, because you have made a fool of me, I wish I had a sword in my hand, for then I would kill you. And the donkey said to Balaam, am I not your donkey, on which you have ridden all your life long to this day? Is it my habit to treat you this way? And he said, no. Then the Lord opened the eyes of Balaam, and he saw the angel of the Lord standing in the way with his, his, his drawn sword in his hand. And he bowed down and fell on his face. And the angel of the Lord said to him, why have you struck your donkey these three times? Behold, I have come out to oppose you because you, your way is perverse before me. The donkey saw me and turned aside before me these three times. If she had not turned aside from me, surely just now I would have killed you and let her live. I would have killed you and let her live. Then Balaam said to the angel of the Lord, I have sinned, for I did not know that you stood in the road against me. Now, therefore, if it is evil in your sight, I will turn back. And the angel of the Lord said to Balaam, go with the men, but speak only the word that I tell you. So Balaam went on with the princes of Balak. And the church said, Amen. Amen. You may be seated. I just want 
talk this morning for a few moments. I want to tell, I just want to talk from the subject. Thank God for the donkey. Thank God for the donkey. Now, my wife said I couldn't use the King James Version. I couldn't use the King James Version this morning. That's the Bible, ain't it? Thank God for the donkey. My first thoughts in preparation for this morning, for the word this morning, was to ask God. The first, I, when I prepare a message, I, the first thing I write, I write thoughts, and then I just go writing thoughts down. And the first thoughts that I had in preparation for the day was to ask and answer the question, God, what do I have to be thankful for? And the answer came back, family, church, friends, and reasonable health. For these, I am ever more grateful. The longer I live, the older I get. I am even more grateful today than I was last year for these things. The further I go along, the more I see in this world, I figured out I'm blessed more than beyond measure. But somehow that wasn't good enough. Those are typical things. And I am no less thankful for them, but... But typical thanks this morning just didn't seem appropriate. It seemed like, one, I serve an a atypical God. I serve a God who's not typical. And it seems that those typical thanks were insufficient to satisfy what needed to be said this morning. We serve a God that's different. We serve a holy God. We serve a God that's not like us. We, we serve a God that does the unusual and the strange. He, we serve a God that speaks through donkeys. <laughs> we serve a God that does things differently. He's not like anyone else. He's, his ways are strange. This, I ran as I was preparing for I ran across a little story of a young couple who was about to start graduate school and they were in love. They had two things, love and Taco Bell. They figured they were just going to survive off of love and Taco Bell. In other words, they were broke. But she needed a laptop, the story she tells her story. She needed a laptop before she started school. And so July was her birthday, and so she asked her family if, she would, if they would contribute toward her purchasing of a laptop. And they were generous enough to supply. They gave her $720. And so before making her purchase, she says that she go, that, that she, she and her husband were about to go off and visit a couple of friends before college started. And so, but their old Nissan truck broke down. They couldn't get it. So they took the truck to the shop and they borrowed a friend's car and they went on their way. And so when they, were, when they got to their friend's place, the mechanic called and said, look here, you know what? Um, your car is going to call, it's going to take a little money to fix your car. Yes, yes, yes. And they began to worry about, well, how are they going to pay for the car? How are they going to pay for this car? And the thought never run her, ran through her mind to use the $720 <laughs> to pay for the car. Well, as they were pondering, they went to dinner with their friends. They weren't going to worry about it too much. But her friend told her, you know, I have a laptop. And the laptop, I'll give you the laptop. And she, you know what? She said, but she said, you know, that's okay. The laptop was much better than the one that she had, but it wasn't good and shiny as the new one she had in her mind. Yes, 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 yes. And so she told her friend, that's okay, about the laptop. And she would kept talking to her husband later on, how in the world are we gonna pay for this car? How are we going to scrape the money together to pay for the car? And, and, but she was fighting off the thought about this money, this $720 that she had been given to buy the laptop. But the spirit kept messing with her, she said. 
And she finally said she had to surrender her plans for the laptop. And I knew that if I kept on insisting, she says, on my own way, and I would be saying no to God. So listen to what she said. So she, le she said, I yielded to the spirits prompting. As soon as I did, it was like scales on my, the eyes of my heart fell off as I suddenly remembered that the number I had jotted down that it would cost to fix the car was $720. Y'all didn't catch the story. She got $720 to, to pay for the laptop. The car broke down after she got to $720, but she figured she didn't have enough money to fix the car because she had this blessing in her hand because she had this thing she wanted to buy. But then when she thought about it, she said, you know what? God knew she needed a computer, and he knew she needed the truck repaired. He provided the free computer so she could use the money to fix the truck. He gave her the exact amount of money that she needed to fix the truck. And she know what she said. She said, you know what? I was blind to my blessing. And if you pause for a few moments, there are some things that God has done in your life that you just blind to the blessing. And one of the reasons why we, our hearts are not thankful enough is because we don't see all the things that God has done for us. We're just blind to the blessing. You have been blind to the blessing. If you, have, you look back and say, you know what? You cursed that thing. You said that thing was a problem in your life. You thought that, was gonna, that job was going to be the worst thing that you could possibly have. But now that you're in it and now that you're going through it and now that you're on the other side, you have to turn around and say, Lord, you know what? I didn't like what you did to me back then. But I have to tell you, thank you now because back then you were blind to the blessing." Blind to the blessing. Too many times we're just blind to the best. And you know what? Balaam was blind to the blessing. <laughs> Balaam was blind to his blessing. This donkey was trying to save his life. Let me tell you the story real quick. Balaam, Balaam would, had been hired by some kings to curse the new nation of Israel. And they, because Israel had come into the promised land, and they had begun to defeat the local nations. Well, this one king called Balak said, we need to hire Balaam to curse Israel. They, Balak sent his emissaries to Balaam and said, you need to come on over here because we got some cursing for you to do. Balaam talked to God and said, no, God said, no, don't do it. Well, they sent, they went on back. Balak sent another emissary back and said, Balaam, we want you to come. Ba Balaam said, look here, I don't care how much money you pay me. God already told me not to come. But then he said, y'all spend the night. Let me see what God got to say. <laughs> Spend the night. Maybe God may change his mind. Spend the night. God might have, a cha have changed his way. And so, and so you know what? He went back to God that night and God said, go ahead on. God said, go ahead on. And so ba ba Balaam, Balaam saddled up his donkey, donkey the next morning. And they go trotting off to Israel. Well, the Lord hadn't changed his mind, but the Lord wanted to get Balaam straight before he went to curse somebody. And, the dog, and so what you know what God did? God sent the angel of the Lord, which was his visible presence. He sends the angel of the Lord and blocks the way. Now, it's amazing that the donkey sees the angel, but Balaam don't see the angel. The donkey sees, the animal sees the angel of the Lord, and Balaam doesn't see. Donkey veers off the side of the road, and so Balaam whips the donkey. 
Donkey goes back on the road. The donkey gets to the donkey gets to this vineyard with his walls on both sides, and he he pushes up against the wall and hurts Balaam's foot, and Balaam beats him again. Finally, they get to a narrow place in the road where the donkey can't move to the right, donkey can't move to the left, and the donkey has nothing to do but bow down. Balaam beats him again because he sees the angel of the Lord. And Balaam, Balaam beats the donkey. Finally, the word says that the Lord opens the donkey's mouth and said, why in the world are you beating on me? What have I done to you to deserve this beating? And, and Balaam said, Look, I'm so mad with you. You know what? If I had a sword, I'd cut your head off. Donkey said to Balaam, he said, look here, you've been riding with me all this time. Have I ever treated you bad? And, and Balaam had to say, no, you haven't. And it was then that the angel of the Lord opened Balaam's eyes. And he saw the angel. He saw what the donkey had been looking at all this time. And notice what the angel said. He said, you know what? What you about to do is wrong. And if it had not been for the donkey, I would have cut your head off. The donkey, in effect, saved your life. The one you've been beating on, the one you have been complaining about, the one that you thought was hindering your plan, the one that was preventing you from getting where you thought you wanted to go, the one who was keeping you from your intended purpose, he's the one, that the one that you were cursing is the very one that was saving your life. And you know what, just like that woman with that $720, Balaam was blind to the blessing. I come to tell you this morning that sometimes you need to thank God for the donkey. Y'all don't hear me. Sometimes you need to thank God for the donkey. Sometimes you need to thank God for the stuff in your life that you think is not going right. Oh, man, y'all don't want to hear me. See, see, in order to really think, you've got to think. you got to think about all the things that God has done. You must think about how far he's brought you from. You must think about all the blessings that you have. In order to really tell God thank you, you must first think about all the things that he has done. If you're not careful, the only thing you'll thank God for are the good things. <laughs> All the things you think have gone right in your life. The, you'll mess around and only begin to thank God for everything that's only smooth in your life. And all that other stuff in your life, that's just a problem. I'm not going to thank God for that. But if you've lived any time, you've figured out for some of the things that have gone wrong in your life, they turned out to be a blessing in your life. And you've got to turn around and tell God, thank you for the donkey. The thing that hurts you the most turned out to be the thing that blessed you the most. The thing that caused you the most pain in your life turned out to be the very thing that God used to bring glory in your life. You better learn to tell God, thank you for the donkey in your life. I like the way Frank, St. Francis of Assisi put it this way. He said, listen to this. He said, all things look better when they look like gifts. I'm going to repeat it to you. All things look better when they look like gifts. See, the problem is some of the stuff that we look at, we don't think that's a gift. We think that's a problem. And really, it's a gift. Come here, Paul. Let me tell you what Paul says. I had, I had a thorn in my side. We don't know what that thorn was. We don't know if it was a health problem or, or an eye problem. We don't know what I sure what it is. But the Bible, Paul said himself, the Lord gave me a thorn. And I asked the Lord to take the thorn away from me. Matter of fact, he says, I asked the Lord three times. And the Lord each time said no. And finally the Lord said to him, my grace is sufficient. 
Brothers and sisters, the only way you're going to figure out that God is powerful is you got to be weak. The only way you can find out God is providing, you got to be broke. The only way you know that God is a healer, you got to be sick. The only way you know that God can show up and show out, you got to be by yourself sometimes. And so you know what? You might need to begin to think to thank God for the donkey. Thank God for the trouble. That's hard. I, I, listened, I listened to the testimony. I lost my job. I got all these health problems over here. At some point, you got to tell God, you know what? Even though it doesn't look too good, I got to thank you for things as well as they are. Some of us, we've been too blind to the blessing. We're too blind to the blessing. We're too blind to it. We need to thank God for the donkey. Things that don't make sense in our lives, we need to thank God for them anyhow. You know why? Because the Romans says all things work together for good. So the stuff that don't add up in your life right now, the stuff that looks like it's a problem in your life not right now, it didn't say that all things were good. It says all things work together for good. And you know what? God can take the bad in your life. He can take the trouble in your life. He can pick, take the stresses of your life and the challenges of your life and he can work them out for your good. I don't know. I got my pound cake illustration on that one. Y'all know my pound cake illustration. You know, you know, don't nobody eat no raw eggs. A few people eat raw eggs, but you know what? My daughter came home and I had the eggs and the butter sitting out waiting on her. There's some flour there. She said I didn't buy enough flour, so she had to call her mama and say, Mama, get some flour on the way. Nobody eats flour by itself, but you know what? No, if you ever taste lemon flavoring or vanilla flavoring all by itself, it's nasty. But you know what my daughter does? She cracks those eggs and stirs them up. She puts that sugar in the bowl and stirs it up. She puts that flour in the bowl and stirs it up. And you know what? She sticks it in the oven, and it comes out something I can eat individually that stuff tastes nasty. But when she puts it all together in the same bowl and mixes it all up and sticks it in the oven, it comes out worthy to be eaten. And I come to tell you this morning that there's some stuff that God has put in your life. It doesn't taste good right now. But when he gets all in the oven and he works it all together, he sticks it in the fire. You know what? You're going to come through. You better thank God for the donkey. You better thank God for the donkey. You got to thank God for the donkey. You can thank God for some pain. Sometimes pain promotes healing. Pain promotes, sometimes, you know, it sounds crazy, but sometimes the Lord got to break your leg in order to heal you. Because I found out, they tell me sometimes that you know what, the leg is stronger at the point of break. When a leg has been broken and been put back together and mended, sometimes they say that thing is stronger. Sometimes God allows pain in your life in order to make you stronger. You better thank God for the donkey. Sickness can promote the attitude of gratitude. You know what? If I never had a sick day in my life, I would not appreciate the good day. Now that my steps are getting a little shorter, I used to run up the stairs. <laughs> Matter of fact, the staff at Golden Gate knows when I'm coming up the stairs because I take two, three steps, don't I, Stephen? But these days, I ain't taking, excuse my English, I ain't taking two, three steps. A couple of times, I done snuck up on them upstairs because I didn't hear you coming up the stairs because I done slowed down. The knees don't work like they used to. <laughs> I heard Brother Robinson say he got two new knees. See, until you are sick, until you go through some physical pain, you really don't appreciate what you do have. I wasn't feeling this 10 years ago. You better thank God for the donkey. How when you're out, it makes you appreciate when, you, when you're in. Last, guess what? You know what? Loss brings blessings. You got to thank God for the donkey. I'm almost done. Oh, I should be done. I stand too late. Sometimes God takes stuff away. Now, this is painful. But there's sometimes God will take stuff away in order for him to bless you with more. 
Hear me, hear me. I'm almost done. I'm almost done. I'm sorry. I'm gone after 11. I'm three minutes past, two minutes past. But you know what? Sometimes the stuff in our hands prevents us from seeing the stuff that God wants to put in our hands. Y'all didn't catch that. Sometimes it's, we are so busy focusing on and holding on to what we have that we fail to see what God wants to put in our hands. And you know why that is? Because we're so busy looking at the stuff instead of looking at the giver of the stuff. If we focused on the giver of the stuff, then whatever was in our hand, we would be thankful for. And, we, and if it happened to be struggle and pain in our lives, we would thank God for the donkey. Y'all hear me? Jesus says, it's the, he says, the kingdom of heaven is like this. It's like a man who found a pearl in a field. He went, he was a great pearl merchant, and he found this great, a pearl of great price, and he went and saw, sold all his pearls, all his merchandise. He sold everything he had so that he could buy this one pearl. I come to tell you this morning that if you really want to get all that God has for you, you're going to have to get rid of some stuff, and sometimes God has to take that stuff in order for you to get your hand empty so that he can fill it again. You better thank God for the donkey. I'm done. I'm done. Last thing you probably we need to thank God. Some donkeys in our life. I tried to list it out some of the donkeys. But you know what? This one got me. There's some stuff and this goes right back to Balaam. There's some stuff that could have happened that didn't happen. <laughs> Now, now, I don't know about you. I can close right there because there are some things that I know that could have happened but didn't happen. The time I was driving down the highway and fell asleep and the car went right into a telephone pole and I walked away with a little scratch on my forehead. I know what could have happened but it didn't happen. I know there's some stuff that I have done that other folk have died over. But I look back and say, you know what? It could have happened, but it didn't happen. And you know what I'm going to begin to do? I'm going to thank God for the stuff that could have happened, but didn't happen. But if that doesn't get you off your seat, if that doesn't get you excited, if that's not a donkey in your life, let me tell you, there's some stuff that could have happened that you know nothing about. There's some problems that you could have gone through that the Lord just kept you from, and you don't know nothing about it. All you know is that you're going right along. It's just like my children. When my children are young, I tell them, you got to hold my hand. I tell them, don't run in the parking lot. Cars can't see you in the parking lot. Give me your hand. You know why? Because they can't see all that mama and daddy can see. So I'm holding their hands, and I say, babe, stay close to daddy. Give me your hand. You're not walking across the street without, hold my hand. Get somebody by the hand. Why? Because daddy can see what you can't see. And there have been times that if daddy's eyes were not open to see the danger that was around, you know what? It could have been another way. But you know what, my children? My children just going along. Holding hands, playing, thinking, holding my hand, but they ain't got to worry. They not want, they don't see the danger around them. But you know what? I've got a daddy. His name is Jesus. And I put my hand in his hand. And there are some things that have could have happened that didn't happen that I know absolutely nothing about. And so you know what? Today I thank God for the donkey. I thank God for the stuff that did not happen. I thank God for the stuff that could have happened, maybe should have happened, but it did not happen. And for that I have to tell God, thank you, thank you, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. So you know what, today, I'm just not going to thank God for my wife and my children. I'm not just going to thank God for, for my church family whom I love. I'm not just going to thank God for the family and friends that I have. I'm not going to thank God that I, today I don't need no new needs. I can still keep moving. But you know what I'm going to thank God also for? I'm going to thank him for the donkeys in my life.
the people that have tried to keep me out of trouble. My mind's running back now. I think about my mother and her four friends, three friends that ate lunch every day for 23 years, and each one of them prayed for us, their children. I'm living on the prayer. I don't even know what they prayed. I just know that they prayed on my behalf. I'm thankful. Thank you for my grandparents. I didn't hear, I never saw it, I, but I've always heard my grandparents got on their knees with their 12 children every night. Every, my mother said, I heard, I heard my mom and daddy on their knees praying for us every night. I'm living somebody else's prayer. And so the day you know what I want to do, I just want to tell God, thank you for the donkeys in my life. For the people who have tried to kept keep me, for the people who have tried to protect me, for the people that put a hedge around me, for the stuff that didn't look right but it ended up turning out right, I thank God for the donkeys. Let's pray.